powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith and Abuela, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's Word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. Faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Owen. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transforming broadcast as we receive the engrafted word of God. And today I'll be sharing with you focus on knowing the will of God. The most important thing in life is to understand God's will because that is the foundation for making right decisions. If you truly want to have a productive life, a successful life, the first thing is to discover the will of God. Knowing what God's will is for your life helps you to see things from the perspective of the will of God. The knowledge of God's will prepares us for the God kind of future. There is the God kind of future, the future that God wants you to experience. The future that is consistent with his will, with his plan. So we have to focus on knowing the will of God. Whenever things happen in the natural or around you, the most important thing is to say, Lord, what is your will concerning this situation? What do you want me to do concerning this situation? This is the reason David was a mighty man. Because he knew how to make inquire, he knew how to inquire from the Lord. He knew how to ask God, do I go? Should I not go? This man understood that God's direction for his life was strategic in the pursuit of his vision. If he was going to be successful, it's because God gave the direction. If he was going to succeed in his purpose, it's because he's following God's instruction for his life. Unknowing to most people, they try to resolve the things of the spirit from their natural strength. The natural can help us so much. We can only receive help from the supernatural. That simply means by from God. We can receive help only from God. So focus on knowing the will of God. You see, the will of God helps you to live a life beyond any form of limitation because knowing his will is the key to developing your self-confidence. There is a confidence we experience when we know that we are in the will of God. There is a, a confidence we experience when we know that we are in God's will. And without the knowledge of his will, we cannot walk in that level of confidence. There are people right now that have lost their focus, they have lost their passion for the things of the Spirit because of the situation or the challenges or the problems they are facing either in their relationship, in their job, in their finances, and they are losing focus on God. Focus on knowing the will of God. Someone may ask a question, how do I know the will of God? It begins when you are born into the family of God. What do I mean by that? If any man be in Christ, is a new creature. He said, if any man being Christ, he is a new creature. He said, all things have passed away and all things have become new. If any man be in Christ, so if you are born again, your spirit man is recreated. If you're born again, your spirit man is recreated. Man is a spirit. He has a soul. He lives in the body. If you are born again, your spirit man is recreated, and this recreated spirit feeds on God's word. The word of God is the food of your spirit. The word of God is the food of your spirit. The more of God's word you receive, the stronger you become in the things of the spirit. The word of God is the food of your spirit. The word of God is the food of your spirit. So how do I excel in the things of the spirit? How do I reign in life is when I have the knowledge of God's word. So in Romans chapter 12, I'd like us to look at the scripture carefully. In Romans chapter 12, 
verse 1, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He said, well, present your body as a living sacrifice. Your, your, your body is a living sacrifice. Your body is the temple of God, because greater is he that dwells in us. In fact, John 4 verse 4, it says, Ye are of God, little children, you overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. Because the greater one lives in our inside, it is a proof that our body is the temple of God, and this body is part of what we use for worship. If we truly want to express worship, we have to use our body. Now, look at this scripture said, present your body as a living sacrifice. How do you present your body? You present your body by separating yourself from things that is not consistent with God's word. Separate yourself from the things that does not glorify God. So in verse 2 he said, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Is it be a transformed by the renewing of your mind? The renewing of your mind is important if your faith is going to be effective. I said the renewing of your mind is important if your faith is going to be effective. You have to renew your mind with God's word. The process of renewing of the mind begins with reading God's word or studying the word of God and meditating on the scriptures you have read. When we meditate on God's word, it helps to bring a refreshing to our spirit. So when we renew our mind with God's word, we are quick to understand the will of God. The written word prepares us to understand the spoken word. I said the written word of God prepares us to understand the spoken word. We can't truly understand the spoken word without having it, the knowledge of the written word. The logos is important if we're going to understand the rhema. I said the logos is important if we're going to understand the rhema. So the written word prepares us to manifest the will of God. The written word. So Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2.15. He says, Study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see, as you read God's word, it prepares you mentally and emotionally to focus on the will of the Father. The reading of the word of God. So we are being transformed according to John Gospel in John 15 verse 3. He said, Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. He said, you are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. That simply means God's word contains the cleansing power. The transforming power of God is rooted in his word. I said, the transforming power of God is rooted in the word of God. I said, the transforming power of God is rooted in the word of God. If you want to transform your, your life, your job, your ministry, your, your work with God, is by getting the word of God into your spirit. The more of the word of God you have in your spirit, the better you become in the things of the spirit. So John 15 verse 3 said, Ye are cleansed by the word which I have spoken to you. That's Jesus talking. That it is this word I speak to you that will bring the cleansing, that will bring the change, that will bring the transformation. The word of God is the will of God. But there is the revealed will of God. Maybe let's take for instance, God wants you to go to Canada. Maybe you are in Ghana or in Nigeria or in the UK or in Australia. And God said, go to Canada. You will not read that in the Bible. You won't see that in the Bible, go to Canada. But how do I understand that God wants me to go to Canada? Number one, God may speak through a dream. He may give me a night dream, a dream or something to reveal to me. He said, I want you to go to Canada. He may give me a dream. I may be reading through the written word of God. And suddenly the Holy Spirit gives me an insight and says, I want you to go to Canada. He drops it in your spirit. And then he begins to confirm it. With more revelation, with more inspiration, he begins to confirm it. The Holy Spirit gives you the word. He gives you the word to prepare you to go to Canada. So you may not say go to Canada in your Bible, but as you fellowship with the word of God, it is you, your spirit man will be quick 
to understand the will of God. Your spirit man will be quick to respond to the will of God. Your spirit man will be quick to respond to the will of God because when the spirit of God said, go to Canada, your spirit begins to bear witness. And how will your spirit bear witness is when you renew your mind with God's word. If our mind is not renewed with God's word, it will be difficult for us to focus on the will of God. The will of God for your life, one of the ways you understand the will of God is, I was sharing with one of my spiritual daughters yesterday about Romans 14, verse 17. That if you want to understand the will of God, maybe when you hear a voice or when you receive a revelation, you have to text it with this scripture. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. He said, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. He said, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. He said, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. How do we prosper? Righteousness. Peace and join the Holy Ghost. So when you hear the voice of God, the voice of God will, will, will bring peace. It comes with peace. The voice of God will produce joy in you. There is a joy that we experience when we hear the voice of God. You can hear the voice of God the same time you're confused, you're worried, you're depressed, you're not happy about it. No, that's not the voice of God. The voice of God will bring peace. The voice of God will bring joy. The voice of God will magnify righteousness. You, you, it, those who focus on God's will will always allow the leadership of the Spirit to influence their way of thinking. Those who focus on God's will. So, making the will of God your priority is the foundation for productive living. If you truly want to live an effective life, discovering the will of God for your life. So when you hear any voice or you have any dream or you have any vision or any trance, always take it back to the scripture. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. The vision you had, the dream you had, does it magnify God as a righteous God? The, is it consistent with the with the gift of righteousness you have received in Christ Jesus? Is it consistent with the finished work of Jesus? You know, sometimes we hear things, if we're not careful, we can be deceived because the enemy always wants people to move away from the knowledge of the will of God. So one of the ways we judge the voices we hear is to judge it from the perspective of the finished work of Jesus. Does it line up with what Jesus has done? The scripture established in John 10, 10, he said, The thief cometh not to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, I have come that you have life and have it more abundantly. So the thief comes to steal. The thief comes to kill. It comes to destroy. So any message that comes to bring that picture of the will of God are focused. With, we are going to rise beyond every form of human opinion that have potential to distract us from unlocking our possibilities. When God's will is your focus, you cannot be defeated by the things that defeat others. You know, there are a lot of people today, they have just missed God. You know, when I use the word, they miss God, I'm actually saying that they walked away from the plan of God for their life, either because of their need or because of the situation around them. They walked away from the plan of God. And that is not the will of God for us. It doesn't matter what is happening around you. Insist on standing on the will of God in respective of what the natural situation may be or the pressure you're experiencing from family members or from your friends. Choose the will of God above anything in life because God's will opened door for a ternary word. If you want to experience a ternary word, it's because you functioned from the will of God. Those who function from God's will are the people who are going to fulfill purpose. You cannot truly fulfill your purpose or reign in life or excel in life if you function contrary to the knowledge of the will of God. If you function contrary to the knowledge of the will of God, you cannot reign in life.
The key to an excellent spirit is when you focus on the will of God. One of the ways we cultivate excellent spirit is when we focus on the will of God. Now, in Romans 12, I like to read the scripture, Romans 12, verse 2. He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good. He said, when our mind is renewed with God's word, we can prove things. There are a lot of people who can prove things. They just, because someone said something, they just jump into it because they are ignorant of God's word. When a person is ignorant of God's word, it, it is going to be difficult for them to understand God's will. Because when people are ignorant of God's word, they are not going to be will of God minded. Because we become will of God minded when we choose to function from the knowledge of the written word. This is how we become will of God minded when we choose to function from the knowledge of the written word. Now let me say this to you. Someone you honor or respect may ask you to do something. If they ask you to do that, but it doesn't line up with God's word, you have the choice to say no. If your will of God minded, there are certain opinions you don't have to honor. Because if you focus on the will of God, it is an indication that you're going to experience supernatural help from God. God will supernaturally help people who make his will their focus. You know, like Jesus was sharing, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. You see, these things will be added because we have made the kingdom a priority. I said, these things will be added because we have made the kingdom of God our priority. If God's kingdom is not your priority, you'll be making decisions that will lead to setback. This is why people are in a circle. You know, they are always in that circle. They, they are wondering, when is this circle going to break? When am I going to come out from this situation? When will this storm be over? When will this crisis be over? The most important thing whenever you're facing a difficult situation or you're going through any form of dilemma or challenges of life that is not consistent with your expectation, what you have to do is to discover what the will of God is. The knowledge of God's will empowers you spiritually to break forth. I want to say that again. I said the knowledge of God's will empowers you spiritually to break forth. One of the ways we we break forth and we rise above the storms of life or the, the challenges of life is when we have the knowledge of the will of God. The knowledge of God's will will produce the boldness to move in the direction of God's expectation for you. There is God's expectation for you. There is what God wants you to do. There is what God has called you to do. The fear of men is one of the reasons why people don't stay in the will of God. The fear of men, the fear of what they will lose. You know, for some people, because of the fear of men, they decided to stay away from the will of God. The fear of men, the fear of I don't want to lose this relationship, the fear of I don't want to lose this, I don't want to lose this money, I don't want to lose these finances, I don't want to lose that. Because of that fear, a lot of people have not successfully stayed in the will of God. They have not successfully stayed connected to God's will because of the fear of men. If the fear of men determines what you do, it is an indication that you don't trust in God. Because those who trust in God will rise above the fear of men. Those who trust in God, they will rise above the fear of men. Because the fear of men is the reason why it is difficult for us to pursue the will of God for our life. Because we are too attached emotionally to some people and we felt that, well, I don't have to lose this relationship. We have been here together for five years. We have been here together for ten years. We have been here together for these years. But this relationship is not helping you to tap into your purpose. This person is not helping you to grow in the knowledge 
knowledge of the will of God, this person is always influencing you to make decisions that are not consistent with God's word. There is a reason for you to re-evaluate that relationship and reconsider what you're doing and ask yourself some basic question. How long will I put up with this? How long will I remain in this circle? I need to make progress emotionally. I need to make progress mentally. I need to make progress spiritually. But being here, I won't be able to make the progress. God may have spoken to you and said, I want you to go to the left. And this person said, I want you to go to the right. God said, go to the left. And this person is dragging you to the right. The question is, who will you obey? Who are you going to listen to? If the will of God is your priority, you will experience greater reward. If the will of God is your priority, but you cannot make that decision of following God's will, except you root faith in the word of God. Because the knowledge of God's will will produce the faith to move forward. The knowledge of God's will will produce the faith to move forward. But without the knowledge of his will, my faith cannot flourish. My faith cannot prosper. It will be difficult for me to rise above the limitation and the challenges that may be there before me. Making the will of God your priority will help you to experience uncommon increase, uncommon promotion, and uncommon success. Making the will of God your priority. Decide to live from the will of God. God, I want to know your will. Concerning ministry, concerning business, concerning job, concerning the school to take my children to. Where should I take these children to? Where should I go to do the job? You know, you, you just have to be led by the Spirit of God. If you are not led by the Holy Spirit, it will be difficult for you to come into a place of joy, peace, and, and the, the manifestation of fruitfulness. A lot of people want to see the manifestation of fruitfulness, but they are not in the will of God. How is that going to happen? It's not going to be possible. If you want to be fruitful, choose God's will. And we choose the will of God by listening to God, by allowing His Spirit to influence us, by allowing His Spirit to determine how we think and how we function, by allowing His Spirit to decide our way of doing things. If we don't allow the Holy Ghost to decide our way of doing things, it will be impossible for us to flourish in the things of the Spirit. The will of God, the foundation for true success. God reveals his will through his word. God can reveal his will to you through a prophet or through another believer in the body of Christ can get a word from God to you. God can reveal his will to you by, by leading you through his spirit. God can reveal his will to you by the Holy Ghost, by showing you a dream or a vision or a trance. There are many ways God wants to speak to you if you will listen. If you make the will of God your priority, you will live a life of fruitfulness. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you know one of the keys to effective life is to come to the knowledge of God's will, is to be a person who love God, who love his word, who, who have made his word your, your focus. You know, I like to tell people this, that if the will of God is your focus, you will rise above any storm that comes your way. If the will of God is your focus, you will rise above any storm that comes your way. It doesn't matter how the storm looks like, you will rise above that storm. Make God's will your priority. Be this kind of person that prays in the Holy Ghost and say, Lord, I want your will. Lord, show me what to do. Lord, show me how to do it. Lord, reveal to me who you want me to connect with. You can't connect with everybody in ministry. You got to know who God wants you to connect with. You got to know who God wants him to be your pastor. Everybody can pastor you. You, you need to know whose, whose DNA is connected to yours. You need to, you need to feel it. You need to know who God has put you and them together. You can't be running around the whole place and be wasting time, wasting resources, wasting your purpose, your passion. No, you gotta know who God has put you and them together in this season of your life. Understanding your place of destiny is the key to unlocking your potential. 
Understanding your place of destiny. There is your place of destiny. There is a place God has called you to be. There is a person God has called you to. When we talk about a place, it can be a person. It can be a ministry, someone that God has hooked you and them up together. And whenever they minister, they feed your spirit. Whenever they minister, you will see direction. Whenever the minister understanding comes to you, be quick to understand that God is calling you to stay with them. Be quick because a lot of people have missed the will of God because they are, okay, I need to be here, I need to be here, I, I need to change this, I need to change that. I used to ask people a question. If you're used to a particular kind of food in your culture or in your country, and you go to another country, and you're not used to that kind of food, do you know that you have to, you're going to be very conscious when you're eating? You are going to be conscious because you're not used to it. There are food I'm used to. Because of the culture where I live, there are food I am used to. So if I say something that is not that kind of food, I'm a little bit conscious. So I'm going to eat carefully. I'm not just going to rush it to eat it because I've not eaten before. I've not been there before. And this is so important when it comes to ministry that you need to know what kind of word you're feeding on. What are you eating? Who are you eating on this table? Who do you feed from? A particular woman of God called me, very great woman of God. She said, Apostle, I don't feed from everybody's table, but I feed from your table. She knew what she's looking for. She knew what, what to eat. Because whatever you eat will show around you. It will show in the way you think. It will show in how you walk. It will show in the things you do. So you, you have to eat healthy. You can eat healthy spiritually. And it is important to know where God has put you, where God has connected you. One of the ways we experience supernatural acceleration is to stay connected to where God called us. I said one of the ways we experience supernatural acceleration is to stay connected to where God called us. Because where God called you is where God will bring your spiritual meal. This is why you don't have to be offended at anybody. Oh, they don't have the word of God there. Oh, they don't have... God they didn't call you to go there. So if God has called you to a place where he's feeding you with the word of God, you stay there. I have one pastor for 10 years before he went home to be with the Lord. For 10 years. Because he was feeding me with God's word. He was feeding me. So I had no other place to go than to sit down there and receive from him. You grow spiritually by understanding what you want, how to get it, and where to get it. And when you find the place, stay there. <laughs> Very important. When you find the place, a lot of people could have made so much progress in life. They could have made so much progress in life, but they, they, they quickly, they're looking for shortcuts. They're looking for, okay, is it here? Is it there? They're always looking. When you find what God wants you to do, where God has connected you, what he will stay with it. Don't replant yourself because you may be responsible for your feeding. Yes, don't replant yourself. Don't replant yourself. When my spiritual father went home to be with the Lord, I was in pain. And I asked the Lord a question, where should I go? You know what he said to me? Stay where you are. Stay where you are. The person who took over from my spiritual father is now my spiritual mother or my spiritual leader. He said, stay where you are. He said, if you don't listen to God, you may get yourself into so many junk, so many trouble, and so many problems. The peace of God. How do you know where God has put you? You have peace in your heart. You have joy. It is a place you are always hungry to be. You always want to be there. You always want to connect with the person. You always want to be around the person. You always see it as an honor to always connect. You have peace. You have joy. Even in business, you can't be doing a business that you're struggling with. You're not happy with it. You're not happy about it. You don't like it. You're just doing it for doing sake. But there is no joy. Do what you enjoy to do. 
Do what you enjoy. Do how do you know that God has asked you to do something? It's when you are doing it with joy. It's when you're doing it with peace. When you're doing it with joy. If there is no joy, there is no peace. Uh, you know, there is no manifestation of that the, the of righteousness. So the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If there is no manifestation of joy and peace, just leave that thing. Abandon, leave it. Don't worry about it. Because anything that is not giving you peace and joy is a proof that God is not in it. You will be struggling with it. Anything that does not bring peace to you, if you sit down with a particular group of people and you don't have peace, you don't have joy, stop sitting with them. Stop sitting with them. If you're sitting with a particular group of people, you always want to talk with them, but, but you don't have peace, you don't have joy, you disconnect because you can't waste your time trying to please everybody. When will you finally stay connected to the will of God for your life? I'm here to encourage you today. Make God's will your priority and your life will be a wonder. Make God's will your priority. Make God's will. Stop trying to please everybody. Stop trying to be on the good book of people. People can walk away from you in the next five seconds. People can abandon you. People can walk away from you. But the most important person that will never walk away from you is God. So it is better you are in his will. Then he will connect you with the right relationship, with the right people. People that will help you build. People that will help you grow. People that will develop you. People that will stand with you. When you destiny, God is doing something in these last days. So your, your destiny relationships comes from God. And it's important. You stay with it as you can grow and flourish. How do you know a God-given relationship? The presence of that relationship will cause you to grow and improve. You always see yourself growing because you come to know them. They, they are helping you. You're growing mentally. You're growing emotionally. You're growing spiritually. You're also growing financially. You're just getting better because whatever God starts, you will increase. Hallelujah. So if you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I think this should be the second time. <laughs> and you know, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you have just prayed this prayer with me, I'm always glad leading people to Christ. And uh, I want to encourage you to take advantage of my resources online, Faithman Teaching on YouTube. Go to YouTube and subscribe to my channel. It's Faithman Teaching on YouTube. More than 1,400 videos and every day new videos are coming there. So just go to Faithman Teaching on YouTube and subscribe. And also you can watch me on Finish Work TV. Dot com. FinishWorkTV.com is 24-7 every day, helping many people around the world to receive the engrafted word of God. So go to Finish Work TV today and watch life-changing teachings. Tell your friends about Finish Work TV. Tell them. Tell your mom. Tell your friend. Tell your loved ones and they will not remain the same. Yeah, they should not remain the same. Okay. If, if you want to have a water baptism, please, uh, uh, maybe you can... You can look for a local church where they can baptize you. Someone was asking about water baptism. You can look for a local church where they can baptize you. Or also, you can get a friend who is a minister to, to take you to the pool and just amass you and pray with you and just come at you. It's not a big deal having a water baptism. Hallelujah. Water baptism is not a big deal. Amen. So you just get someone who is a believer or a minister of the gospel in your city or somewhere and they can take you to the pool and they just amass you and bring you out and pray with you. Hallelujah. They're in, in the scriptures, they didn't have classes for water baptism in the scriptures, you know, because when that guy got saved, you know, uh, Philip, or I think Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, you know, and the man said, you know, can you do something for me? And he said, there is a water close, and he baptized him, you know, so we, that's not a big deal, praise the Lord, hallelujah, so we we'll encourage you to keep watching Finish Work TV that's come, and also, uh, I like to get my new book on Amazon.com, 40 Things You Need to Know About Your Future. 40 things you need to know about your future on Amazon.com. 
by faith, my little brother. So just go to Amazon and, and, and get my new book and it will be a blessing to you. Also, I want to encourage you to consider, you know, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. You know, partnership is helping me to be able to keep the broadcast going every day, teaching multiple times and helping many people. So you can partner with me today on PayPal. And just go to PayPal and say, Apostle, like, I just want to stand with you. You are doing this job. I want to support you. So go to PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. Until I come your way soon, don't ever forget this. There is greatness in you.